This is gonna be metal. Metal. So metal. Because it's foil. Foil is aluminum. It's a metal dresser. Here is the before shot. Completely honest. That's what it looked like. The color used to be kind of a oh. rosy pink, but over the years it's turned kind of orangish and I had to go. I couldn't take it anymore. Make sure you clean your project thoroughly and say your last goodbyes. For this, you're gonna need glue. I use Mod Podge, but you can really use anything you want. Sponge brushes. You can get these in bags at Walmart. You can get them at Home Depot individually if you want the higher quality kind. You should use the higher quality brushes for this project because the cheaper ones, like the one on the left, are gonna fall apart much faster. Here I just have a little pitcher of water and a mixing bowl. And then of course you need your aluminum foil. Make sure it's the heavy duty kind because that cheap flimsy stuff is not gonna work. And this step is optional here. You don't have to mix water into your glue. Mod Podge is just expensive and I wanted it to go a little bit longer, but it does make it a little too runny. So use it if you have extra thick glue or if you're just cheap like me. It's your call. Applying the glue is pretty basic. Just spread it on evenly, about medium thickness, and let it dry about halfway before you start applying your foil. I used my fingers to create a really nice crackle texture. I loved it. It's just beautiful and oh so metal. It reminds me a little bit of lightning. And this is where the heavy duty stuff really makes a difference. If you didn't take the time to cut beautiful even rectangles here, because who does? Go around the edges and trim all the excess foil down to about an inch so you can apply your glue to the very last bits and fold everything over to the back. And voila, beautiful. Do this over and over until you have all your drawers done. For the top, pour it on, spread it out, working fairly quickly so the glue doesn't dry all the way. Lay your foil on in nice large strips. Since it's the top of the dresser, it's going to be the most important, so take your time with the texture. Even though you should be using the heavy duty foil, if you rush and get too excited, get too crazy and rough, it's gonna rip. So be careful. It's also handy to keep a scratchy towel over your shoulders. You're going to constantly need to wipe off the excess glue from your project and your fingertips. If the glue starts drying on your fingers, the foil is going to stick to you instead of to your project. And you don't want any glue drying on the outside of the foil because it's going to mess you up when you go back later to paint. I found this out the hard way. So don't leave a huge line of glue like I'm doing right here. At this point, you're going to be feeling like an expert and you're also going to be cursing your creative ambition at the same time. But stick with it, it's going to be totally worth it at the end. For the mirror, make sure you get the glue all the way up to the edges of the glass on the sides and one or two inches onto the back as well. When you come to the areas where two layers of foil are going to have to overlap, it helps to let the first layer of glue and foil dry first. If you try to do both layers at the same time while the glue is wet, everything slides around and makes it a bit difficult. If you have any little details or filigree like this, it can get a bit tricky, so pay attention. Just gather extra foil towards the detail with your fingers and carefully press down around the edges and into the creases of the detail without breaking the foil. We're going to let the glue dry before we go any further. If you break the foil while the glue is still wet, Everything's going to start sliding around, it's going to be one sticky mess, and it's going to be pretty much impossible to do. Once you've covered the entire piece in foil, let it dry for a few days. There's no air heating the glue, so it's going to take a while. Then you have to go back and get all these little extra pieces and glue them down. This part takes forever, but it's definitely necessary. Go back with a nice sharp blade and trim all your edges. Now that the glue's dry, here's where we go back and press the foil into all the detail. Take your time to smooth the foil down into all the cracks and crevices and nooks and crannies. 
The color underneath is gonna show through, but that's okay, because we're gonna paint it later. Once that's done, go back over all the broken foil edges with your glue to seal it. Now it's time to paint, which is my favorite part of doing anything. I'm using my Martha Stewart multi-surface metallic acrylic. The colors I'm using are brushed pewter, black nickel, and gunmetal. I absolutely love this line of paints. You can use them on paper, plastic, glass, fabric. I've even used them on my walls for faux finishing. I prefer a metallic finish for this specific project, but any quality acrylic paint should work just fine. Sponge on your paint and give it a few minutes to dry almost completely, but not quite. Go back with a damp rag and scrub the color off of all the highlights. See how nice that's starting to look? Anytime you're faux finishing something, whether it be walls or furniture, you wanna make sure you move the paint across large areas at a time. In this instance, if I was to work on each drawer individually, the whole piece wouldn't have quite such a cohesive look. It would look a little bit too busy, too chaotic, but moving the paint across large areas gives your project a more marble, natural look. This part here is when things really start coming together and looking nice. Up until now, you all have been riddled with self-doubt, thinking that you're ruining your furniture in the most brutal, time-consuming way possible. To paint my little filigree design, I'm gonna be using my Martha Stewart a textured metallic finish in lamp black. It's a really beautiful, unique type of paint that has a gritty, iron-like, incredibly sparkly texture when it's dry. It's really nice. Paint this into all the recesses of the detail, but do not let it dry. Go back every few minutes to wipe off the excess paint off of the highlights. Be thorough and make sure you're covering all the areas where the base color is showing through and use your same damp rag to blend out the edges. Once you're done painting, it's finally gonna be time to seal your project. I chose to use this water-based clear brushing lacquer that I've had laying around for a while. But if you're gonna do the same thing, make sure you make your plans ahead of time because this shit is intense. If you sleep in the same room, you will die. I chose to add in some of my Pearl X pigments and my silver and macro pearl. This step is completely optional and unnecessary, but they're gorgeous and lately I just really want everything to fucking sparkle. This lacquer is so intense that after a few seconds, it's gonna start mutating the brush. Look at that, it's like molten metal. It looks opaque, but it's gonna go on clear with extra shimmery, glimmery sparkle. Go over the entire piece in even thin layers. And I did four coats on the top surface and on the drawers. And you really do need to do this in a well-ventilated area, or you will surely die. Can anyone guess who is on my computer back there? After a few days of letting the lacquer dry, this masterpiece is finally done and it is gorgeous. Look at it. Just look. I just want to say that there are variations in the ways you can do this. You don't have to do this on a massive piece of furniture like I did. You can do it on the small stuff too. Side tables, hat boxes, nightstands, even walls. I've, I've seen on the Pinterest. I've seen it. Also using long strips of foil versus just tearing little pieces. You would just kind of make the edges all crazy and uneven and random. This would give it more of like a silver leaf effect. The downside is that would probably take forever. The way I did it is a lot faster, but you can see little spots here and there where the edges are. But you don't see my first glance, so it's fine. This already took fucking forever. I just didn't want to spend that much time. But if you have a smaller project, you can, you should do it that way. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. It took like a week 
I've never done this technique before, but I saw it on Pinterest and I was looking for something to do with this dresser. Of course, I decided to do that technique on the almost the largest piece of furniture I but I did it. I really love it. It was so worth it. This place was a mess. Now it's clean. Now it's metal in here. If you decide to try this technique, post pictures on Instagram and tag me. I think that would be awesome to see. Stay metal, my friends. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. <laughs> this is this, this recording? Say that again? Are you drunk? No. No. Huh. Where you been? Smoking up. It's 2 a.m. But you love me. Yeah, I do love you. Dearly. Say something. You don't have to get that close. You're going to blow it out. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. Balls heavy. Heavy balls. Heavy balls. Heavy. God. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Get out of here. You're in timeout. Just really want everything to fucking sparkle.